Hello lovely people and welcome back to our today's tutorial. In today's class, we have this beautiful exponential equation, Math Olympiad, to tackle. It's very simple, okay? Meanwhile, you can pause the video and think on how we can answer this question. Let's know your own answer in the comment section. Remember my advice as usual to students who venture into this kind of exam, especially those ones that involve exponentials, is that they should be familiar with their equations because most times these exponential equations can lead them to linear equations, quadratic, higher polynomials like cubic. It can also lead them to system of equations. They should also be familiar with their logarithm and they should also be familiar with their exponential rules. When they know these three things, then they are good to go. Now let's see how best to answer this question. Now to start it, we are going to begin with solution. Okay? Now remember, this is what we are giving. 3 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x is equal to 65. We can choose to raise this also. Just watch. We can choose to raise this to power of 2 upon 2. And also do same here to the power of 2 upon 2. I will tell you why. You know too well that 2 over 2 is 1. Now, if you have 3 to the power of x raised to the power of 1, because this has become 1, you will notice that in indices, anything raised to the power of 1 is that value. So the whole of this will still give you 3 to the power of x. So what it means is that doing this has not changed anything. It's still the same as this. Now you can ask me, what if I choose to use 3 over 3? Students are free to use 3 over 3. You can also choose to use 4 over 4. But you have to be careful because if you are using 3 over 3, you should be familiar with how to use your cubic polynomial. Okay, cubic polynomial are those ones that the highest power is 3. You should, if you are using 4 over 4, you should also be familiar with using your quartic polynomial. If you know this, then you are free to use any of them. But to make the work very much easier for us, let's use 2 over 2, okay? Now, if this is understood, let's continue. So at this point, what would you do? Just remind yourself of your rule of exponents. In this case, what this means is that if I have a to the power of m raised to the power of 1 over n, it is the same as a to the power of m over n raised to the power of 1. Or let's use another letter. Let's say p here and p here. Okay? So that when you open up, this is the same as this. So if you apply it here, what would you do? This is going to give us 3 to the power of x over 2. Then we raise it to the power of 2. Because if you open this, you are going to have x over 2 multiplies 2 over 1. Okay? Remember your rule, which also says a to the power of m to the power of n is a to the power of you multiply the power to give you this. So if you are opening this, this will multiply to give you this. And when you still multiply, it returns you to a into 2 over 2, which is this. Okay? So what it means is that this can be written in this way, following this. Then we can also do same here to have 2 to the power of x over 2. Then we raise it to the power of 2. And everything is equal to 65. I hope it makes sense. Now what do you do next? What we're going to do next now is we can at this point let the value inside to be another variable to reduce the work for us. So we can say let 3 to the power of x upon 2 be equal to, choose a letter, you can say, let it be equal to, let's say, p, and 2 to the power of x upon 2, let it be equal to q. Okay? So at this point, let's replace this. So here, we're going to replace it with p, and you raise it to the power of these two, minus this, you replace it with q, and raise it to the power of p, 2. 
and is equal to 65. Okay? Now, at this point, remind yourself of your rule of binomial, which says that if you have a squared minus b squared, it is a plus b, that's difference of two squares. Okay? So, this is your difference of two squares. You can apply it here to now have p plus q and p minus q is equal to 65. Now, what do you do next? You can express 65, get the factor, two factors, and when you multiply, it gives you back 65, okay? You know that 65 is, you can use 5 here to give you 13. 13 here is 1. So the two prime factors are 5 and 13. A student may want to ask, what of 1 and 65? It is also okay, but if you place this here, just watch. We have p so here we're having p plus q into p minus q is equal to we are taking 5 and 6 and 13 okay the assumption there is that p plus q 5 times 13 5 multiplies 13 we give us this and 13 multiplies 5 we still give us this but which of these assumptions will be suitable here because p plus q should be bigger than p minus q. I hope that is clear. So in that case, this assumption is not acceptable. So we're going to make use of this assumption, which is 13 and multiply by five. Now back to this question, if you are using one and 65, you know there is no two numbers you can add to give you 65 because this will take the bigger value and this will take the lesser value. So no two numbers can be added to give you 65. And when you subtract, it gives you one. You see, there is no, you can also do your research. Let's know in the comment section. Okay. So in that case, the, we are going by this, that the values are, in this case, we are having it that P plus Q and P minus Q is equal to 13 multiply five. Okay. So in that case, it means that when two values or expressions are multiplying, it means that this is equal to this and this is equal to this. So P plus Q is equal to 13 and P minus Q is equal to 5. Did you see that? So at this point, what do you do? We are going to have... We are going to have... This has led us to system of equation, just like we said at the beginning. So what you would do here is to solve it, okay? So what you would do now is to get your P, you, to, you, are, you can get, add this P and P together, and when you add it together, it gives you two P, okay? If you add this, it is gone, because Q minus Q is off. Then add this also, it gives you 18. So to get your P, you divide by two as the coefficient. And if you do that, your P will give you 9, okay? Now, this has given us the value of P. Now, what do you do now? Substitute this 9 in any of the equations. So if you do that, we are going to have from equation 1, we are going to have our P is 9, our Q is what we are looking for, and is equal to 13, okay? So what we have here now is that to get your Q, you subtract 9 from both sides. And if you subtract 9 here, it goes off. So you have Q is equal to 13 minus 9. Did you say that? So at this point, we can now... It's becoming interesting. So we see that our Q is equal to... If you subtract this, it gives you 4. So our Q is 4. So having gotten the value of P and Q, what do you do next? You have to fix it because the question is on X, not on P, not Q. So fix it back here. So you have to remember that you said, let 3 to the power of X upon 2 be P. So in that case, what do you do? You are going to have 3 to the power of X upon 2 is equal to, our P now is what? 9. Okay? So what do you do? You can express 9 as a product of 3. And it is 9 is 3 times 3 to give us 3 to the power of 2. So this will give us this, which is equal to 3 to the power of 2. 
Did you see that? So at this point, the basis are the same. Equate your powers. So if you equate your powers, you are going to have x. This will give us x over 2 is equal to 2. And you can make this to be over 1. Okay? So cross multiply. x multiplies 1 is x. And 2 multiplies 2 is 4. Did you see that? So this has given us the value of x. You can choose to try further by also recalling your value for Q. Okay, since we've gotten this, you can choose to try further. Let's still know if using this will still give us the same answer. So we can also do it this way, that two to the power of X over two is equal to our Q is four. Okay, can we express four as a product of two? Yes. So it means that four is two multiplies two, which is two to the power of two. So it will be 2 to the power of x upon 2 is 2 to the power of 2. So you see the basis are still the same. So at this point, what do you do? You can choose to equate your powers to still have x over 2 is equal to 2 over 1. So if you cross multiply, this multiplies is x and 2 multiplies 2 is 4. So you still see that you still got the same answer with x as 4. Now that you've gotten x as 4, can you do a little check? Let's know if it corresponds to what we have in the question. So let's do a little check. So in our check, we are going to have, this is what we have, 3 to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 4. Let's see if the left side will be equal to 65. Now, 3 to the power of 4 is 3 multiplied 4 times. And when you do that, it's going to give you is going to give us 81, okay? Now, 2 to the power of 4 is 2 multiplied 4 times, and when you do that, it's going to give you 16. So you see, and when you subtract this, it's going to give us 81 minus 16. This will be 11, giving us 5, and this will be, this will be 7, so we have 65, and which is what we have at the right side i hope this helps you a lot if it did don't forget to subscribe for the more you will get from us most importantly let's know how you feel about this in the comment section you know you can give this tutorial a thumbs up share with your friends and your colleagues remember i will see you in our next class to discuss more stay cool until then bye bye